Hey everyone, so I just did some third party updates maybe like two or three days ago. Um, so there's four videos that I posted total. I think that was Monday night, I want to say. So if you haven't seen those already, check back for those. I have been working on my mid-month Zodiac readings and I'm posting tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the 15th. Um, so I'm sorry I haven't given you guys a third party update. There are some updates, but I just I have to focus on my um, my specific Zodiac readings for now, but then in a couple days, two or three days or so, I'll give you guys another third party update. Um, or maybe the cards will now, I don't know. I just wanted to give, I just wanted to throw something out there because I know I haven't posted for a couple days, like two or three days now. So I wanted to, to give you guys some kind of reading. So it's whatever the cards want to say. This could be a small energy group of two or three people, or this could be a bigger energy group. You know, I try to make the title specific so that you know what's going on. I mean, so that you know if it's your reading or not. So, you know, I don't really know what the story is going to be. Looks like they might want to talk about a third party anyway. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Manipulation, deception, mental instability, spying, traps, blocked, tied up. Overthinking, overanalyzing, self-sabotage. Vulnerability, receptivity. Chaser, JC, power struggle. New love, faded encounter. Make your move, green light. Submissive, weak to will, weak willed. Fear of commitment. Mm. Oops, sorry. I don't know why I apologize to inanimate objects, but I probably will forever apologize to inanimate objects. <laughs> So the energy I get here is this is someone that was a pessimist. This is someone that was always afraid that you were going to hurt them. They might have been manipulated and deceived by other people, possibly a third party, but possibly just friends. They might have just gone to their friends and asked for advice on you and their friends told them, um, you know, oh, that girl is only out for money or she's only out for, she just wants to have sex with you or... You know, they put him down. Maybe they, like, teased him. Male or female, you know. There, there's no specific gender. So if this is, you know, it could be male-male. It could be female-female. Male-female, just take it as it resonates, you know. Even if I say she, it could be a he. So please keep that in mind. But, um, you know, I could also see it as two women. It could also be, you know, I mean, because there are two women here. So this could be a woman that let her friends kind of get in the way of this. You know, but there's just this energy here. I'm seeing it as either two women or two men like like this man went to his group of male friends or this female went to her group of female friends you know for some reason with as far as this manipulation and these lies and rumors are concerned I'm feeling like it was someone of the same sex like a best friend or just like a close group of friends um you know this this woman if it's a woman she might have people around her that kind of hate men and kind of you know put their put this idea in her head like oh if he's not texting you back he doesn't you know, if he hasn't texted you in a few days, he must not give a shit about you, you know, like, uh, you know, all men cheat or just, just stereotypes. I'm just getting that someone here was unfairly stereotyped. Someone here made assumptions about you or about your person. Someone here is like, there's some kind of rumors that were spread. People that didn't really even have all the facts made some kind of assumptions about you. Like, they assumed you were just out for sex, out for money, um, that you were maybe hooked up, hooked on someone else. It was kind of someone that just got in this person's head. I feel like this friend, wh whether it's, like, male or female, I feel like this person's friend is bitter. Like, they kind of want to drag them to their level. It's like, maybe the, maybe this friend is single and they didn't like seeing you or seeing your person, um in a relationship like they didn't like that someone was leveling up and having their own life outside of them so they put these ideas in their head someone that was mentally unstable basically created someone mentally unstable created this block in your connection and i feel like your person might have their own mental illness they might have their own they, they i get like an anxiety from them like they have their own fears and their own insecurities so the psychic vampire over here kind of played on those insecurities and fears you know, this is, there's some kind of miscommunication here that was not cleared up is what I'm feeling. And it's just the energy of someone that really cares about you, but like 
not, they didn't make a move. They, they didn't trust you. They listened to other people over you, you know, and it's like they're spying on you. But there was some kind of block, you know, they, they maybe got it in their head that like, oh, um, it might be one of those situations where like you both waited for each other to reach out or something like that. Or maybe it's like one of those situations where it's like her, her female friends, um, were talking shit about you and your male friends were talking shit about her. Like, but like both, both your friends were kind of, it's like people were jealous of this connection energetically, you know, even if they didn't know your person, they were still just jealous of that energy. They were jealous that you have that had that kind of love that they just, Maybe they've never had that before. So there's just a lot of jealous energy, a lot of jealous uh, fake friends around you guys um, for this energy group is what I'm getting. And this could be on their side or yours or both. But I'm getting that someone here played on on your person or on your mental on your um, mental instability on on some, someone played on someone else's mental instability and fears and anxieties you know someone already had a natural inclination to be a pessimist and to think worst case scenario like you know it's like a good things will never last for me kind of mentality everyone's out to get me everyone just wants something from me um you know it could be that kind. it's just that kind of energy and I feel like this person got in their head and they should have made a move towards you, but instead they listened to other people and they got scared. So they, you're just kind of their unicorn. It's like they fantasize about you. They love you. They want you, but it's like, you're just like a unicorn to them. You know, have you ever heard the term unicorn? It's like something that's just so real and so pure and so beautiful that, you know, people would almost rather have it just be a dream because they just can't handle the, the idea of, of risking everything and losing it. You know, which is unjustified because it's like everyone's scared, but people need to decide what's worth it to them. Everyone's scared of getting hurt. Everyone's had their heart broken, but people need to decide who and what is worth it to them. You know, and in my opinion, someone that loves you is going to text you. They're going to call you. They're going to make the effort no matter how afraid they are. They're going to come forward. You know, they're going to try to communicate. They're going to try to clear up any issues. But this person just kind of got in their head. They let their insecurities get the best of them. And they did not clear up the issues that needed to be cleared up. They did not address the rumors. They just, you know, assumed the worst. Some of these people, it's like they were angry at you for something you didn't even do. And you could feel that anger in your relationship. Like they were like accusing you of things or they were sabotaging or they were you know, just being guarded and being distant and being kind of douchey. And you're like, I didn't even do anything. And it's because, you know, this person's friends put ideas in their head, you know, that you're a cheater, that you're out for money, that you're out for sex. It's, there's different stories here, but basically there's some kind of rumor, some kind of, some kind of jealous person, uh, got in the way of this connection. And I'm feeling like it's friends. I'm not feeling like it's a karma. I mean, it could be a karmic for some of you, but I'm feeling more like it's someone I'm getting like same sex. So it's either a female friend of a woman's or it's a male friend of another man of a man is what I'm getting or a friend group. So I'm getting, or I mean, I guess it could be gay or lesbian too, you know, take it as it resonates, but I'm getting more like, like more of like a friendship energy. Like, you know, this friend, maybe it's like their best friend or their close friend. And like, they couldn't, they couldn't handle that you had so, that you got someone beautiful or you got someone sexy, like, and they could, they can't do that. So they, they decided to be competitive with you. Um, or with your person, you know, take it as it resonates. But someone here decided to be competitive because they couldn't, like, they couldn't just accept that these two people were happy and in love. They couldn't accept that. Like, someone was jealous. They were jealous of that kind of love, and they were also jealous because they didn't want to lose their friend. They wanted their friend's attention. You know, it's like, maybe it's like a group of people where most of them are single, and they don't, they don't want their, their best friend going off and getting married or having kids they they want their best friend to themselves you know so it's just some kind of jealous friends around someone here and that kept your person blocked and tied up for a while and so it's like you were kind of their unicorn where it's like they were just spying but they kept sabotaging it it's like they would go to confront you about this or they would ask you they would want to ask you about this or they'd want to clear this up it's just this energy of someone holding like a major secret. It was almost like they were mad at you and they wanted to address this. They wanted to say, hey, my, like, they didn't know how to bring it up. You know what I mean? Because what are you going to say? Like, hey, my friend thinks that you're using me for this or that. Like, are, are you? Like, they don't know how to say that, you know? So they kept it inside. 
and that turned into resentment and anger in your connection and you probably didn't even understand why you're probably like dude i didn't even do anything to you why are you being distant why are you being guarded why are you angry at me for no freaking reason and it's like they got in their head they started overthinking things over analyzing just self-sabotaging it's almost like they looked for confirmation of their insecurities is kind of the energy I'm getting here too, where they, you were very different and they felt like it was too good to be true. Like they felt like you were out of their league, like you're too beautiful or too handsome for them. Um, you're too unique, too creative, too this, too that. Like why would you ever want them? So it's almost like, you know, with their mental instability and their fears and anxieties, they looked for confirmation that you were going to hurt them. So they might have gone to this friend group and said, they might, they might have done it to themselves. They might have said, like, wow, look how beautiful this girl is. I bet she's probably just after sex or probably just after money, right? And, like, this person was so sure of it that I think that it might have influenced his friend's opinions, too, or his friends might have been like, oh, yeah, she probably just is. I mean, if that's what you feel, you know, and, and it's just, it's, it's like he looked for confirmation. He looked for, it's like he was getting scared. He or she was getting scared because it was just too unfamiliar, too unpredictable. You were their unicorn, their everything. It was just like they got into this too good to be true mentality. Um, and they didn't like that unfamiliarity and that unpredictability. So they, they tried to go back to their comfort zone and they tried to get confirmation of their, their fears and insecurities. So it's almost like they, they, um, for some, I mean, for some, it's like their friends did influence them. But for others, I feel like your person or you actually, like, influenced the friends. Like, like they actually, like, maybe for some, the friends weren't actually jealous. But they, you know, your your person went to them and said, you know, like, she's, a, she's out of my league. Like, like, she's you know, she's got to be using me, right? Like, like they, they, they were very biased. And so the friends were, you know, kind of in agreement. They're like, oh yeah, that's how you feel. You know, probably maybe she is. Yeah. You know, like they just very, like a very pessimistic mindset. So it's eight of swords energy where it's like this person, they either deceive them. I feel like other people deceive them, but like I said, it was kind of like them doing it to themselves at the same time. You know, they allowed that energy and they almost asked for that kind of energy because they didn't like how unfamiliar and unpredictable this connection was. And they started overthinking, overanalyzing. Overthinking, overanalyzing, self-sabotaging. You guys ever see Goodwill Hunting with Robin Williams? It reminds me of that end scene with early. It's like towards the end with Minnie Driver and uh, Matt Damon. I think it's Matt Damon, right? Where, you know, she's crying and she's telling him, she's like, I love you. I'm just trying to be here. And he's taking it as like an attack. He's like, like she's there crying and telling him how much she loves him. And he doesn't hear any of it. He just takes it as an attack. He just takes it as her being condescending. It's almost that kind of energy where it's like in the past, it's like you were so vulnerable, so open with this person, so receptive. And they always turned it into a power struggle when you, you weren't even competing with power for power. You were just trying to love them. You were just trying to be there for them. And, you know, we have Chaser Chasey here, Power Struggle. It's like, you know, you weren't even trying to, you weren't even trying to compete. And they, it's like, they, they didn't like that vulnerability. It freaked them out. You know, they just turned everything into a power struggle. And I'm feeling like, I feel like you're still vulnerable with this person. I feel like you're still waiting and hoping and praying here that this person gets out of this energy and trusts you and opens up to you and stops assuming the worst and stops making everything a power struggle, you know, comes out of this spying energy and actually like communicates and moves forward with you. I feel like a lot of you guys have been waiting and hoping and praying for that. You know, a lot of you are just standing in your power and kind of sitting back to see what happens and seeing if this person is going to reach out, uh, what they're going to say. Like you're kind of trying to feel it out and figure out what, what energy this person is in. Like, are they, are they still going to do the same shit in the past? Like, like not trusting you, not believing in you, sabotaging things, making things a power struggle? Or are they going to step up and, you know, give you the love and attention and respect that you deserve and actually, you know, communicate with you and believe you and trust you? It's like you're kind of waiting to see right now. Like, I think it just really broke your heart that this person didn't believe in you. It's like you were so vulnerable, so open, trying so hard to show this person just how much you loved them. 
I think it just broke your heart that they, they just didn't believe in you. They didn't believe in the connection. It's like no matter how vulnerable with you, they, they found a way to, you know, just not trust it, to, to be pessimistic, to push you away, like everything became a power struggle. And for a lot of you, I feel like you're still holding hope for this person. It's like you're still waiting. You're still hoping that this comes back around. But at the same time, you're very guarded because you're like, you know, you feel like this person's always going to hurt you. They're always going to let their fears and insecurities and anxieties get the best of them. They're always going to run. They're always going to sabotage. I think for a lot of you, you kind of realize the power struggle. You realize that dynamic that was going on. You recognized that the more you chase them, the more you try to reassure them the more they run from you, the more they push you away, they, the more they challenge you. It's almost like some of you tried to give this person reassurance. You tried to show them that you're staying and that you love them. And the more you did that, the more they hurt you. It's almost like they just wanted to see how much you would take, how much, like how far they could push it. You know, mind games kind of energy almost. Where it's like they wanted to challenge you and see, you know, if you would stay or not. And... You know, some of you are really guarded now because it's like your heart can't take that. It's like you're afraid of how much further they can push it. It's like, like how much more are they going to hurt you to to test their theories about, you know, it's like it's like they believe they can't trust you. So they want to test that out and, and prove themselves right. Um, so it's almost like some of them wanted to push you to the edge and make you snap and, you know, break your heart and then. You know, when you snapped, they'd be like, oh, see, I knew she was going to hurt me. I knew she was going to break my heart. Um, it's like they couldn't fathom just this, how unfamiliar it was. So, yeah, a lot of you are guarded now because it's like you don't want to, you know, you feel like no matter how hard you try, no matter how much, like you saw what was going on. You saw the energy struggle. Like you saw what was happening. Like the, Like I said, the more you tried to, to get through to them and love them and just be there for them, the more they would distrust you, the more they would challenge you, the more they would push you away and sabotage. And it broke your heart to see the person that you love more than anything in the world, you know, not trusting you, not believing in you, listening to rumors, listening to other people over you. And so a lot of you, it's like you're still vulnerable, you're still in love with this person, but you don't really believe in them the same way anymore because it's just... You know, when you have that faith and you're emotional and vulnerable with them, it's just, it's heartbreaking. It's like, you know, it's like they just, like, you know that if you're too vulnerable, they're going to run. So a lot of you are kind of standing in your power. Like, you're just kind of, it's like someone's looking out the window. Like, they're not, it's like you're not really making a move anymore. You're just like, okay, this person is either going to step up and love me properly and believe in me and believe in the connection and move forward with me. Or they're not. They're going to keep listening to rumors. They're going to keep being insecure. They're going to keep sabotaging. They're going to keep hurting me. You know, it's like like you kind of know it's going to be one of those two options. So you're just waiting to see what this person does. You're waiting to see if they step up, if they if they communicate for those in, in no contact, if they um, move forward with you, if they take the next step with you. You know, a lot of you are just kind of sitting back to see what happens here. And what I'm feeling is, hmm, this could be them coming back around and it seems new at first, but then they have the same fears of commitment. I want to look into this too. For others, I just feel like the universe might bring you someone new and it's really sad because like this was the person you were meant to be with. This still is the person you're meant to be with. That's like your potential life partner. But for some, it's like the universe doesn't want to allow this person to keep breaking your heart you know it's like this person like it's like your person's spirit guides are working with them and trying to get them to step into their power and be brave and be confident and and dive in and trust you and trust the connection like this person's spirit guides are really pushing them but for some this person is is just very stubborn you know like their soul might want to be with you more than anything but you know, their ego, their, their mind, who they are in this lifetime comes into play. You know, you could have had several past lives with this person, like on a soul level, like in the 5D astrally in your dreams, all of that, you guys might be together right now. You might be, you know, married in, in the higher realms, you know what I mean? But, but, you know, their, their mind and what they, 
their day-to-day -day choices, you know, their decision not to call you, their decision not to be brave, their decision not to step up. Like, you have to take those things into account, you know? Because in my opinion, someone that loves you is going to fight for you. Someone that loves you is going to communicate. They're going to reach out. They're going to be brave even if they're scared, you know? And a lot of you are kind of in that position where you're just, you know, you're just kind of watching. You're like, you're, you're, you're letting their actions and what they do and don't do. Um, you're like, you're, you're, you're stepping back. You're not fighting for them. I think in, in past relationships, you probably fought for these people or did this, but you don't have the energy this time around this time. You're kind of just sitting in your power and you're like, you know what, if this man loves me, he's going to pursue me. If this man loves me, he's going to communicate. If this man loves me, he's not going to let me go. If this man loves me, he's going to show me he loves me. He's going to trust me. He's going to work through his issues with me. He's going to work through his fears with me. He's going to believe in our connection. You know, it's like you guys are kind of saying that to yourselves. It's like you, you know, you know, you know to just kind of sit in your power and wait to see what he does or what he doesn't do. You know, silence is an answer too. And I think you guys know that no matter how much it hurts. And, um... What I'm feeling is like this person was meant to be your your life partner. This is like your true love. This is the person that you're you're meant to be with. But for some, their spirit guides are tired of trying to push them to communicate, to, you know, move forward. I know you guys are all in different stages. Like some of you are not in communication, so it's like they're trying to push your person to, to communicate. Some of you guys are like together, but this person's really distant with you. And you know that it's time to take that next step towards living together or towards marriage. But this person keeps hesitating to give you that proposal and that love offer. And their spirit guides are, are pushing them to maybe pushing them to say, I love you, that kind of energy. Um, you know, take it as it resonates. But, you know, your spirit, this person's like the spirit guides involved in this are kind of divided. Some of them are still working with this person and trying to push them towards you and trying to, you know, get them to stop being stubborn and get them to take this connection to the next level because you guys were meant to be together. You guys, this was destiny, but they also don't want you waiting forever. So for some, it's like, like I said, it's like your spirit guides are divided. You know, I think you have half, half your spirit guides that are still working on this man and trying to push him towards you. And then the other half are saying, you know what, screw this stubborn ass. Let's bring her new love instead. So now you have two potential life partners. I don't know if you always did. It's really interesting energy because some of you, it's like this, this other guy, was originally just supposed to be it. You weren't even supposed to meet anybody else. But, you know, the universe, like, doesn't want you guys lonely and heartbroken forever. You know what I mean? Like, some of you, it's like you're crying your eyes out every single day over this person, and they don't even know it. They just assume the worst. But you're going to let them assume what they want to assume because you're like, you know what? Someone that loves me is going to fight for me, you know? They can, it's like they can assume, they can believe the rumors if they want. You're, you're letting them believe whatever they want to believe. You're not, you know what I mean? Like you, you see, you've seen that arguing and, and trying to plead your case doesn't work with this person. That they just kind of take it for granted and, you know, just use it as a way to test the waters and push you even further and break your heart even more. You know, so I think you have that awareness that if this person loves you, they're going to fight for you. They're going to step up for you. But it just feels like this person's being stubborn. Like, they're just very set in their ways. They're very, um... It's almost like they convince themselves that you're over them. But you're not. You're still very much in love with this person. But they they have it in their head that you're over them and that you're you're probably dating somebody else by now or you you've moved on or you don't care or you know I'm hearing the name of Eric like I'm hearing a guy be like yeah she's probably with that guy Eric so I don't know who that is but um and if I as always if this is your reading and you want a private reading just send me an email my email is dragonenchantress at aol.com that email address is right below in the description box below this video so you can just copy and paste it um please like share subscribe comment, you know, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. But, um, any donation, any donations are appreciated too. My donation links are also below in my description box. So thank you guys for that. But anyway, yeah, I feel like your guides are torn on this. It's like, it's like you want this person to step up. Your spirit guides want this person to step up. It's like, but this person is just, it's like, they're still scared. They're still just spying. They're still coming to pessimistic conclusions and making assumptions that you're 
that you're probably over them or you're probably cheating or you're probably doing this or probably doing that. And a lot of you are just like, you know what, fuck it. Let them believe what they want to believe. You know, like, like he's either going to believe in me and believe in the connection and fight for our love or he's not. You know, a lot of you are kind of done being in limbo with this person. You're like, this person can either step up or they can lose me. So your guides are very close to bringing you somebody new if they have not already, because they're, like I said, half of them are divided on this. They're not going to wait around forever. Um, new love, green light, you know, oops, sorry, <laughs> sorry. New love, green light, make your move. Yeah, I feel like someone's going to be sure of you and someone is going to come in here and make a move towards you. It's going to be like green lights, like they're going to trust you. They're going to believe in you. They're going to fight for you. And it's like all the things that you wished and prayed this other person would do, this person's going to do. And I think it might hurt some of you. Honestly, I think you might like at first you might be with this person and you might be like, dude, I miss my old person. Like, why didn't he do these things? Like, why couldn't he tell me he loved me and propose and tell me I was beautiful and do this and that, you know? Some of you are going to be in that energy where you're like, it's just like very distrusting, very, you, you know, it's like, it's just hard. It's hard when you meet someone new sometimes. Like, I feel it, you know? Um, for a lot of you, though, I feel like your person, your old person is going to come back around and try to get you to be submissive because they're going to be like, it's going to, this is going to be what lights a fire under their ass is seeing you or feeling you with this new person. And the ridiculous thing is that this, this person over here that was just so afraid and so in their head, this person's a very powerful manifester. So this person might have actually manifested this new person for you as ridiculous as it is. It's almost like they might have gotten so in their head and so just fixated on you being with someone else, on you being happy with someone else, almost like visualizing you like by a poolside drinking martinis with somebody else and getting jealous and making themselves jealous, even though it was just a delusion. But they, it's almost like they, they manifested it for you. Like they, like they fixated on it so much that the divine got pissed off and was like, okay, you want to fixate on that? You want to fixate on what's not real? We're going to make it real then. You know what I mean? Like you want to create issues that are not there. You want to create these problems. You want to be pessimistic. Okay, we're going to make your fears a reality if you want to stay in that energy. So some of them almost manifested this connection for you, oddly enough, with their fears and their insecurities. My video might cut out at a certain point, so please check back on my channel if that happens. I'll do part two. Um, it might not, but it might. I don't know. My, my camera phone's really fucking weird. But, um, but yeah, a lot of you are going to have this new love coming in and this other person is going to come back around and try to get you to be submissive, but it's going to be, they're going to have the same fears of commitment. What are they going to, what energy are they going to be in when they try to get you to come back around this old person? Yeah. Because they're going to finally recognize, you know, true love, potential life partner. They want you to themselves. Could be something with a club or a party, red flags, hidden motives. Hmm. Some of them are drinking a lot or using drugs. Listening, new perspective. Yeah, they want to show you that, they're, that they've learned, that they have a new perspective now. They're not the same person they used to be. Some of them used to party a lot and they're not partying anymore. Like they used to go out to clubs and drink a lot. Mutual feelings. Yeah, the mutual feelings aren't there, but there's still some kind of stagnation. Pause, reflection, rest. Third party. Yeah, the divine, they needed to, to deal with a third party, and I feel like they've done that. The divine intervened, and now they're trying to choose a path. They're trying to choose you. Some of them want to send you an open, honest message, but they know that they have to reveal some kind of truth. Some of them lied to you, or they had, had a secret from you, and they know that they have to tell you the secret if they message you, and that's why they're having a hard time choosing this path. They're having a hard time coming forward. A lot of you already know what the secret is, though. They think that you don't know, but you do know. Like, like a lot of you are psychics yourselves, or you're very intuitive, so you already knew. Like, some of them, the secret could be cheating. It could be, um, it could be a number of things. But I almost feel like they know that... I'm just getting a sense that they know that this message would be serious. And it might not even be like a secret. It might not be a lie. For, for a lot of you, I feel like it is. But for some, it's more like 
They know that they would have to take off the mask. They would have to reveal their true selves, hidden truth. They, they would have to, you know, see this man looking at the mask like he's not, he's done with the mask. He's not wearing it again. He's not putting it back on. He knows that if he came back to you, he'd have to be vulnerable. He'd have to be emotional. He'd have to, you know, do things differently. And he has the opportunity to do so. But he, you know, a lot of them are still struggling with that, with being that vulnerable with you, you know, some of them might come back around just because they don't want to see you with somebody else, but they're not actually going to love you and respect you. You know, they're not actually going to have any faith in you. They just want to come back around and just because they don't want to see you with somebody else. Um, show me the old person versus the new person. So we're going to pull some more cards on the old person. And it's really sad. It's just so, it's fucking sad because it's like this old person is like your true love. Like you were so happy with this person. But the thing that made you sad is that this person, no matter how happy and how in love with you are, they always like found a way to like challenge you or or not believe in it. It's almost like you would just be like so just like you were just happy, like you were just so in love with this person, like you felt like everything was perfect. You felt like this this person was like a gift from God, like they were just like everything and this person couldn't fathom that someone could love them that much and just love them for the right reasons. So it's like, it's so weird because it's like their insecurities are what hurt you. Like you loved everything about them. They're good, they're bad. Like you loved all of it. You just, it's just their insecurities that were causing issues. Like there was literally, it's like there was literally nothing wrong with your relationship. Like you guys were good and they just couldn't, fathom that it was that good that it was that perfect that stable they weren't used to it so they created issues that weren't there like they looked for things to be wrong <laughs> it's that kind of energy and it's just sad because you were so in love you were so happy you just thought the world of this person and they they just couldn't believe that they couldn't accept that you loved them that much and it's sad because it's like, this is kind of still the person you're meant to be with. This is still your true love. But, you know, a lot of half of your spirit guides are starting to pull away from this person. It's like half your spirit guides are working on this man. And the other half are just like, you know what? This man is going to keep being stubborn. We've been trying to push him to reach out. Or, you know, for some that are in um, in contact, it's like they've they've been trying to push them to do something. So for some, it's it's communicate for those in no contact. For others, for like those in contact, they're trying to push them to say, I love you. They're trying to push them to um, maybe move in with you, maybe propose to you, take it to the next level, make some life changes. And half of them are still relentlessly working on this person, even though they're really sick of how stubborn and pessimistic this person keeps being. But the other half are like seeing you crying. They're seeing you. It's like your ancestors are seeing how much this person broke your heart. They're seeing you crying. They're seeing you waiting for this person. They're seeing you longing for this person and, and praying that this person, you know, takes it to the next level and steps up and, you know, believes in you and believes in the connection and tells you how they feel and just allows them, allows allow themselves to be vulnerable with you. And it's like your spirit guides are, they're listening to your prayers and they are working on this person. They really are. But a lot of them are just, you know, it's like you're kind of losing faith and some of your spirit guides are also kind of losing faith. They're kind of like, they're like, dude, we've been trying. Like we hear you crying and praying. Like your spirit guides aren't ignoring you. I feel like some of you are like praying. You're like, please just bring this person back. Like this is my person. I'm heartbroken. Please just get through to him and bring him back. And like, like, they're listening to you. Your spirit guides aren't ignoring you. But, you know, free will comes into play here. So it's like they really are pushing your person. But if he's going to keep being stubborn, what what can they do? You know what I mean? Like, they're constantly pushing him to reach out to you. They're constantly pushing him to, you know, propose or say I love you or whatever it might be. They're constantly pushing him to to be brave, to be intuitive, to take a leap of faith with you, to put himself out there for you, to show you how he feels. Um, but some of them are like seeing how stubborn he is and how much he fights his own spirit guides. And they're like, they're like, dude, like they're tired of seeing you crying. They're tired of seeing you heartbroken over this. It's like, 
you know, you've had so much faith in this person, but you're starting to really lose that faith in this person is what I'm feeling. You know, this could have been going on for months and months and months for some. Um, so it's like your spirit guides are just like, like they don't, it's like your ancestors are here with you, you know, and they don't want to see you so sad all the time, like missing this person. You know what I mean? It's like they try to tell this person, too, that you're not over them. That's what I'm getting. Because some of them really get in their head and they're like, oh, I bet she's with somebody. Or I bet she's I bet she's doing this. Or I bet she's living her best life without me. Or yada, yada, yada. Little does he know you're, you're crying your eyes out every day over him or almost every day. And um, I'm feeling like your spirit guides have been trying to tell this person that. Like, they've been trying to communicate with this person. And, like, your person starts getting the message, but then they think it's too good to be true and they doubt it. They're like, oh, that's probably not intuition. That's probably wishful thinking. And so they they shove it under their rug, you know. And it's like your spirit guides are telling them. It's like, like, they keep, they just keep telling them again and again and again. You know, like, no, she's not over you. No, she's not with somebody else. Like, she still loves you, dummy. And he is, he's just like, mm, it's wishful thinking. <laughs> like, and he gets in his head. And some of your spirit guides are just kind of pissed off and, and tired of it. They're just like, okay, we've done everything. We don't know what to do. So some of them are still working with him. But the other half are looking for somebody else for you right now is what I'm getting. They're, they're manifesting somebody else for you right now because they're, your own spirit guides are starting to lose faith in this man. They're starting to lose faith that he'll ever be brave and step up and love you properly. Um, so let's look at, you know, and it's just sad. It's sad because this is a potential life partner. Like this, it's just so sad because you were so happy with this person. But it's like, it's frustrating because it's like, you know, I can feel that energy that, you know, like channeling you guys, I can just feel that energy that like no matter what you said, no matter what you did, they just did not believe you. They could not fathom that you loved them. You know, it's like you had like the perfect relationship in your eyes. Like even with all their faults and all their darkness, you were still just so like you loved who they were just as a whole. You accepted every part of them. You know, it's like you were just really happy and they just couldn't like they couldn't comprehend that. They couldn't just accept that you were happy. Let's look into the old person versus the new person. Old person. I mean, there's still hope here, but it's like only if this person steps up and reaches out. I feel like your spirit guides aren't going to give them much more time. Like I said, half of them have already moved on from this and they're trying to find you somebody else now because they're tired of seeing you hurt and waiting for this person that's not making a move. Um, there's still about 50%. I'm getting, I'm getting your spirit guides divided into two. So about half your spirit guides are still working with this person and pushing them towards you. But more and more of them every day are getting fed up and tired with this person not making a move towards you. So it's like there's still hope, but this person's going to have to reach out soon. Or they're going to have to, you know, propose soon or um, move in with you soon or take that, whatever, whatever it is, take it to the next level. Like, you know what that is for you personally, but basically just taking it to the, taking that next step with you, you know, being brave and assertive and confident and intuitive and moving forward with you together. Um, so they still have a chance to do that, but I'm getting that, you know, if they keep being stubborn, all your spirit guides, like your spirit guides are leaving them is what I'm seeing. Your spirit guides are kind of getting to that point where it's like, they're they're not going to tolerate the stubbornness very much longer. So this person has a very limited amount of time to to get this shit together before they're before all of your spirit guides are like I said they're already divided in two but at some point all of them are just going to be like screw this we're bringing her somebody else because this man is going to keep breaking her heart. Seven of Pentacles, the world. Ace of Wands. Angel to Lanou. In this deck, this is about um, light after period of darkness. The Emperor. Hmm. The Chariot. Five of Wands. I just feel like karmic cycles are wrapping up. And this is probably in this person's life and also in your own life. 
And this person, you know, it's like your spirit guides want them to be the emperor. They want them to be an authority figure. They want them to be in that kind of alpha male energy. They want them to be brave, to be strong, to move forward with the chariot here. But there's like miscommunication or no communication. And so and there just keeps being this block. It's like you want that harvest that reward for your hard work that reward for you want all this to be for something you know what i mean like you want to get through this with this person yeah someone's in their head having anxieties depression sleepless nights moving forward page of pentacles king of cups okay Some of them might be having financial issues or anxiety or social anxiety that's keeping them stagnant. Like they're trying to move forward, but they keep like getting stressed out about shit. Temperance. Yeah, they need to kind of just find a balance because life is never going to be perfect. Some of them are trying to like... It's almost like they're sabotaging in a different way where they're trying to like convince themselves that, you know, everything has to be perfect. They have to be you know, making $50,000 a month and they have to have like a nice house and they have to have everything in order to reach out or to, you know, to propose to you. Like they, like they want to propose, but there's financial issues and they're like, oh, I can't propose to her until, you know, um, until my house is paid off or I can't propose to her until, uh, you know, this or that, like, like, oh, she has to have a $10,000 wedding ring. I cannot give her any less. And it's like, you're, you're just over here. Like, dude, I don't even care about that shit. Like, just buy a fucking cheap ring. Like, I don't care. <laughs> you know, like you, you're just at that point. Um, but it's almost like they're using it as like an excuse to sabotage where they know every day they need to make that move towards you, but they find, they're trying to find reasons that they think are justifiable. Do you feel me? Like before, it's like they're still sabotaging in a less toxic way than they were before, but it's still sabotage either way. Like before they were sabotaging in really pessimistic ways, like, oh, I bet she's cheating. I bet, she, I bet she's with someone else. I bet she's doing this or this or this. And some part of them still feels that. But I'm getting now more that they're like sabotaging in other ways. And they might not even realize that they're doing it. Some of them are just sabotaging in the sense that they're like, Oh, like I have to have my finances in order before I move forward with her. I have to, um, I have to do this or I have to do that or blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, oh God, irritating. Yeah, so in a cup, they need to make a choice and they need to find balance. They need to make a choice. Four of Pentacles. Yeah, new start. Some of them are really focusing on finances right now. The hermit. Hermit mode, yeah. Three of Swords, the Wheel. It's like there's a cycle of like heartbreak and betrayal that's ending for you. Yeah, you're going to have justice because you're the Queen of Pentacles. So, I mean, it, I guess the cards gave us a little bit more detail into what's going on. I want to look into the new person now as well. That was the old person. And again, check back for your specific zodiac sign tomorrow at uh, 5 p.m. 4 p.m., sorry. Pacific Standard Time. Let me shuffle these cards really quick, and then I'm going to pull some on the new person. Yeah, it's like they're in Eight of Swords energy. Eight of Swords, you know, th that tarot card, traditionally, it's someone that has, like, swords all around them. And they have an opening right in front of them with their castle and their true love and their home and everything they could ever want. But they're so focused on the swords around them, they don't realize how easy it would be to just walk out of that. To just wake up and just, they feel trapped by the swords, but they're not trapped. There's an opening right in front of their face, but they can't see it. You know, this person's in Eight of Swords energy and Nine of Swords energy, too, where it's like... It's just, it's a weird energy. And then they keep coming out of it. Like, they, they go back and forth between being in the Eight of Swords and not being in the Eight of Swords. It's really weird. Um, but it's like, yeah, like, all they have to do is send that text or make that call or make that proposal. Or, you know what I mean? Like, some of them are afraid that you wouldn't accept the proposal. But 
I mean, it's one of those situations where it's like they're going to believe what they want to believe. And I think that you recognize that now. Also, I'm seeing angel numbers. You might have angels around you guys um, guiding this situation, guiding this, because this is a destined connection. You guys are meant to be together despite this the difficulties. But I'm feeling like... Yeah, some of them are like afraid, but but it's like no matter what you say, they're going to believe what they want to believe. And you kind of know that, so you're not even trying to convince them anymore because you're like, you know what, no matter how much I tell him I love him or how much I tell him I want to marry him or how much I tell him I want to, you know, let move in together or whatever, he's going to believe the worst case scenario no matter what. So you're just kind of at the point where you're like, you know what, believe what you want to believe. You're either going to step up and, you know, be brave or you're not, you know, a lot of you are in that energy. But yeah, like I said, your spirit guides are divided. They're really divided on this right now. They're they're divided on holding on to this man and bringing you someone new. You can actually talk to them too and tell them what you want because a lot of them are seeing you hurt. Like they they okay, so like you pray for this person to come back around and they see you crying and they see you praying and telling them how much you love this person and how much you just wish that he would just be brave and assertive and make a move towards you and you know, appreciate you and love you properly. Like you just wish that he would step into his power and just communicate and show you how much he loves you. And your spirit guides are seeing you crying. They're seeing how hurt you are over this. And so, you know, some of them are, are seeing how stubborn he's being and how pessimistic he is and how he's just still believing the worst even after everything. And so some of them are like really trying to get through to him still, but the others, you know, half of them are seeing you crying and they're like, fuck this we're going to go find somebody new, you know, it's like, they're, they're just, they're really divided right now. So and it's sad because the, this is, this ball is in this person's court. Like they still have a chance with you. They still have a chance to step up and love you. You know, there's still a door open for that, but it's like, they're, it's like the door is open. It's right in front of their face and they're, they're not recognizing it, you know, but it's like, you can't tell them shit because they're not going to listen to you. Angel de la new. Yeah, it's about the light after creative darkness. So what's going on with the new person? What's up with the new person? Show me this story. Nine of swords. Five of pentacles. The lovers. Yeah, I feel this new, this lover, this new lover comes in after a period of depression, anxiety, uh, fears, maybe poverty as well, financial issues, the world. This person might even be helping you come out of this energy. I got the Four of Pentacles here. Yeah, this person might be a King of Cups. So this is somebody that's more vulnerable and more in tune with their emotions, more willing to fight for you, more willing to have a new start with you. I feel like it's gonna hurt at first. Yeah, I just said that I was pulling the Three of Swords. It's gonna hurt you at first though, because you're just gonna want your old person. You're just gonna want, you know. Like, you could be just as happy with either of them. I feel like the happiness is about equal. Like, you could be just as happy with this person as you were with this other person. But I just feel like some of you are so in love with this other person still that, like, when this new person comes in, it's going to hurt because you're going to be like, I miss my old person. Like, that was, like, my home. That was my soulmate. That was the person I wanted to spend my life with. So it's going to be hard for you to accept this new love. It's like it's not going to feel right to you at first. You know, it's like you're going to have a new start and you're not going to be used to that. Um, but it's like, it's just sad. It's just a sad energy because it's like, you guys were meant to be with this other person, but they have free will. So it's really up to them if they're going to take a leap of faith and go towards destiny or they're going to stay in eight of swords energy. But yeah, some of you, it's going to be hard when you meet this new person because you might not feel it right away. You might be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> You might be like kind of like pissed off at the universe too because you're like, what the hell? Like I thought this other person was my true love. Why the hell is like, was the universe just messing with me? It's like, you're going to be broken. Like you're broken from this other person. You gave so much love to this other person that when this new man comes in, it's like, you're not going to trust them. Like you're going to sabotage it. You're going to, you might push them away. You might sabotage it. You might question them. It's like, you're going to feel like no matter how good it feels with them, no matter how happy you feel, you're going to feel like the universe is just going to take it from you. Like you're not going to believe in it. You're going to be so damaged from this other person that broke your heart that when this new love comes in, I think honestly, a lot of you are going to push this person away and sabotage it. That's the energy I'm getting. I mean, you have a choice not to, it's up to you. We have free will. You know, this is just the energy. It's not like it's set in stone. You know, 
Because if I tell you like, hey, you might sabotage this, you know, you have free will. So you can take that energy and you can be like, actually, no, I'm going to do something differently this time. I'm not going to sabotage this, even if it does hurt me, even if it is hard being with somebody new when I'm still so in love with this person, I'm still not going to sabotage it. Because I just feel like some of you are going to be so damaged that it's like when this new love comes in, you're just not going to trust it. You're not going to have that faith. You know, you're going to be like, you're going to think about what the other person did to you. And you're going to think about how much you still love them. And it's like you're going to be holding on to that and you're, um, it's like you're just going it, to, it's like you're not, you're not going to trust the universe almost is kind of what I'm feeling. You're going to be like, okay, this is probably just another game. I'm just going to get my heart broken. Like, like you thought this was your forever person and they ripped your heart out. And the sad thing is that was, it is, it was, and it is meant to be your forever person. Like that is your true love. That is your, your life partner. But again, they're kind of going off their destined path. You know, they have free will and your spirit guides, like I said, are trying to get them back onto their destined path. But if this person keeps being stubborn, what can your spirit guides do? They can't, they can't physically force them to text you or make a proposal. You know what I mean? Um, let's look more into this new person because I'm just getting pain. I'm just getting like the energy of just pain, like with this new person where it's like, they're going to give you everything you want, but you're not going to trust it. You're going to be like. Like, yeah, this is probably another game. You're going to still be heartbroken over this other person. Three of Cups, Hangs Man. You might just have to let go and go with the flow and just have fun and not overthink it. Like, some of you are going to be led to, like... Like, some of you are going to go on a date with this person and you're going to get in your head and you're going to be like, oh, he's not, like, he's not my ex. He's not this or he's not that. Like, you're going to compare him to your ex. Um... And your spirit guides are kind of just saying, you know what, like, just live in the moment. Don't think about the past. Don't think about the future. Just go on a date. Just have some fun here. You know, just kind of let go. Just live in the moment. Just pause and reflect. And, you know, because if you go with the, into the date comparing him to your ex, it's going to ruin it. You know what I mean? Or if you go into the date heartbroken and just, you know, you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't, be, don't be stuck in your ways. Don't be stubborn. Don't. You know what I mean? Like, give it a chance and and have fun. Yeah, it's going to be hard because you're nostalgic for this other person. Your heart is still very much waiting for and in love with this other person. It's like the universe is going to bring you new love and some of you are just not going to take it. You're going to be like, no, I got to wait for this other person. The Empress. Whoops, what was that? Four of Pentacles, okay. Ball on the ground, yeah, peaceful times. Nine of Swords. This person's going to make vows to you, though. I feel like this new person is going to be making you promises. They're going to be loyal. They're going to be honest with you. They're going to be, you know, fighting for you. They're going to be sure about you. But you're going to have to do some deeping. and You're going to have to do some deeping. <laughs> that sounds very sexual, doesn't it? You're going to have to do some deeping over here. You're going to have to do some... Some digging. You have to do some, some deep digging is what I fucking meant to say with the two of swords here <laughs> to make this decision. And don't be hasty. You know what I mean? Don't be like, fuck it, I'll be with him when you're still in love with this person. But don't don't shut this person out either for someone that's not even talking to you or not even like taking the relationship to the next level. It's like you've been together 10 years and they don't want to propose to you. It's like, okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to wait another 10 years? You know what I mean? It's like that kind of energy. Um, so it's like, find like a temperance energy, find that balance, um, with the two of swords, like think about the long term as well. You know what I mean? Don't be too hasty making a decision, really find that balance, like get to know them and pro probably kind of live in the moment. Because like I said, it's going to be unfamiliar and it's going to hurt at first. It's honestly going to hurt because you're going to miss your old person. And either the old person is going to step up and love you properly or they're not, and eventually you're going to fall in love with this new person, even though it's going to it's going to take some stepping out of your comfort zone. I feel like you could be just as happy with either. It's like equal, you know, you could be just as happy with him as you would be with the other guy. Yeah, some of you are going to be in this stagnant energy. I just see like a lot of pain. It's just, it's just like, yeah. The tower, your spirit guides are going to shake things up and force you out of that stagnant energy, though. Some of you are going to try to hold on to the past or hold on to somebody that's 
not loving you properly and not really being there for you and not supporting you. Some of you guys are going to keep holding on to that. And you might have a tower moment where things get shaken up where some kind of harsh, I hate to say it because I know it hurts, but some kind of harsh truth might be revealed that breaks your heart with this other person. Um, or it might just be like a general tower moment where it's like something's going to come and shake things up because your guides want you out of stagnant energy, you know. But they're, they're still trying. Like, you're still praying for this other person, and they're still trying. But again, this person's being stubborn, so it's like they can't, your spirit guides can't do this forever with this person. You know what I mean? I would do a road opening spell after Mercury Retrograde if you do witchcraft. Do a road opening spell just to be on your destined path, just to let, you know, just trusting the universe, letting them bring you the right person. King of Swords, Two of Wands, Seven of Wands. Yeah, this King of Swords might come back around and be defend but defensive of you, but it's like he's just taking so damn long. Queen of Wands. Six of Swords. Because he's going to want this new life with you. And he's going to want this balance with you. Mutual give and take. Yeah, he's wanting to start over with you. Seven of Pentacles. You know, wanting to build with you, but some of them, you know, for some of them, it's like they're going to come after you after you're with someone. It's like you're going to go through a phase where your heart is ripped out, you know, like where you're crying all the time. And it takes you a lot to really let this other person in where you're like, it's like that song, the first, this for the first cut is the deepest. It's like that, that song's coming to mind where it's like, it's going to be hard. Like you're going to have these trust issues. You're going to be in pain. And some of you are really going to push yourself to let this new person in though. And then eventually, at a certain point, you're going to start really falling in love with this new person. And that's when the old person's going to come back around. And you're just going to be like, dude, like, where the hell? Like, why didn't you want me when you had me? Why didn't you want me when I wasn't with somebody, you know? And it's like, you're not going to trust it, you know? It's like, you can be a coward or you can be brave, but you're not letting them hang out in limbo anymore. Your spirit guides aren't going to let them hang out in limbo too much longer either. Sex, seduction, beauty, mystery, enchantment. What cards do I want to use? Actually, let me use the tarot. I just have like a few more cards on the new person, just on their energy. Because I'm still getting like, I'm getting like a lot of old car all cards about the old person still. So I think it's kind of saying like some of you might sabotage the things with the new person or like you might just... Like, it's just going to be painful. It's just what I'm getting. Like, you're just going to be holding on to the old person still. Like, you're not going to be able to let them go. Even though you have someone that's right in front of your face, like, loving you and giving you what you deserve and what you want, you're still going to just wish that the old person would do those things, you know? You're going to be like, why the hell didn't he bring me roses? Why didn't he tell me I was beautiful? Why didn't he ever talk about wanting to marry me? Why didn't he do all the things that this person I just met is doing? You know, it's like, you're going to be in that energy where it's like, just going to hurt at first. Show me the new person. Hi priestess. This person's intuitive. This person's knowledgeable and intelligent. They've studied a lot. Um, they're going to be open hearted with you. I feel like they're going to, yeah, I feel like they're going to want to move forward quickly with you. I feel like they're actually going to want to move faster than you want to move. I feel like you're actually not going to be ready. Like you're still going to be kind of holding on to this and wanting to see if this person gets their shit together and comes forward for you. Um, but this person, like when they meet you, they're going to be sure of you pretty early on and they're going to want to move forward with you with the Knight of Cups and the Eight of Wands here. Yeah, the Chariot. Hermit, the page of wands reversed. Four of yeah, some of you are still going to be in healing mode, though, because you're going to be, like, like in hermit mode, where it's like you're looking at this love offer, you're looking at this person wanting to move forward, and it's like it's going to scare you almost how much this person, like, loves you. And you're, like, you're going to be healing and still planting seeds for this other person. You know, some of you are just going to have a really hard time accepting this new love because you still love this other person so much. And it's just sad because it's like the other person you would be just as happy with, if not even happier than you would be with this new person. Like for some, you were never even meant to meet this new person. Like I was saying, for some of you, like this new person is coming around just because your spirit guides don't want you to be alone. And they know that the other person is being stubborn and they're not making that move towards you or they're not taking the connection to the next level. So they're bringing you someone else. Um, 
but for some of you, it's like you're not even going to be quiet. It's like you'll be happy with this new person at some point, but not maybe not quite as happy as you would have been with this other person. For others, it's mutual. For others, it's like you'd be just as happy with them as with as with this person. But for others, I'm I'm getting that like you were never meant to meet this this new person. You were meant to be with this person, but their ego and their fear got in the way, and they got off their destined path with you. This person's going to want to build with you, though. This new person's going to want to build. They're going to use their intuition. You know, they're going to fight for you. They're going to have that balance. Two of Cups. They're going to try to be patient with you. They're not going to be too patient, but they're going to understand that you're not quite ready to move on from this, this other person. King of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, because some of you are still waiting for that reward with this other person. It's like you're going to have to do some digging. Some of you might end up having to make a choice. And it's like you're going to have to choose between someone that's letting their fears and insecurities get the best of them and not communicating or not taking this relationship to the next level. It's like they're pretending like they don't see your pain. Or you're choosing between someone that you might not be quite as in love with this new person. Like you might not feel the same passion and love and intensity that you felt with the other person. You might not be as happy with them. But they're going to be treating you well and they're going to want you and they're going to, you know, be sure of you. This is like a power couple too. Yeah, justice here because you deserve love. You know what I mean? Like you've waited long enough. It's time to have your wishes fulfilled. It's time to have your ten of cups. And your spirit guides are going to make sure that you have that, whether it's with the old person, that's your true love, or whether it's the new person. Some of you have to hit rock bottom first. Yeah, ten of wands. Page of swords. Ace of pentacles. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, seven of swords. Yeah. There could be a message about dishonesty coming in. I feel like you'll forgive the person, though. I feel like if this is like an old person that lied or had secrets, I feel like you'll forgive them just as long as they're honest and forward with you about it. But yeah, you're having, you're going to have justice either way. So I hope that resonates. I'm going to put this out there. Um, if this is your story, like I said, just email me and I'll do a private reading for you. Check my um, YouTube channel tomorrow for your mid-month Zodiac videos. Thanks, guys.